Godzilla Minus One is now playing in theaters, and it's a really, really good movie. If you guys aren't Godzilla fans, I still highly recommend this movie. The story takes place in post-war Japan in 1945 through 1947 after the Second World War, where we follow Koichi, a failed kamikaze pilot who is being rejected by society, and he has a lot of survivor's guilt. Sometimes he feels as though life is actually just one big long nightmare, that he actually died long ago during the war. He is failing to move on. But on top of all of that, it's also a Godzilla movie. He's actually in here a lot more than you might think. In comparison to the more recent Americanized movies, I think he's in here for at least half, if not a little more so, than, than the movie's runtime itself. The quality of the effects aren't the same. It's a little bit lower, but also you can look at that with a little bit of compromise. Because if you look back at the older Godzilla movies, they're stop motion. So you just see the model, there's no rigging, there's no animation. It's just the model, the camera flying around it, and that's it, Just everything just feels like it's stopped in time. I'm okay with sometimes the effects not being as great as other scenes because we are seeing Godzilla more consistently than any other movie that we've seen him in. And also not only that, he's wreaking so much havoc. This has got to be the most destructive Godzilla has ever been. He's causing a massive amount of deaths, maybe about 30,000 to even more. And written down on paper, yeah, it, it feels like a statistic. But seeing it in this movie, you, you just feel that unfathomable amount of just weight and how it affects not only Koichi, but also Koichi's newfound family and that of Noriko and Akiko, his essentially makeshift wife and daughter, even though the baby isn't related to Noriko or him and they're not married, nor do they have any actual romantic chemistry between each other. They're all just kind of like roommates taking care of this baby. And there's just something so human about that story, about those elements. And he's taking care of this new family by cleaning up these active mines out in the sea. He's getting rid of them because the Americans, they left them there. And yes, this is a dangerous job, but the amount of money supporting both Noriko and Akiko and him wanting to provide for humanity, I, I think that there's something, again, just so human about his character. It's, it's really refreshing to see in a movie. I mean, you see it in movies like recently, The Holdovers, where you just really connect with the characters. And here, in a Godzilla movie, a disaster movie, seeing characters who are actually interesting. Whereas, again, the, the Americanized versions, I think Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things, she was in one of them. And I, I cannot tell you what she did in that movie. Whereas this movie, I'm going to remember the story. I'm going to remember the characters' names for a long time to come. Godzilla Minus One is one of the most memorable Godzilla movies. Now, I do remember Godzilla 1998 because that was the first Godzilla I was ever exposed to. I think maybe possibly. I think I might have seen something on TV before then when I was super, super young. But yeah, Matthew Broderick, all that. It's a very laughable movie. But looking back on it and the cartoon. Oh my gosh. Have you guys ever seen the cartoon after that? It's all just hilarious, dumb fun. But here, it's actually like Godzilla being taken seriously. Something a lot of people won't be able to get over is the subtitles, which is so unfortunate. I grew up watching anime, so I'm totally used to it. I was the kind of guy who wanted Parasite to win Best Picture back in 2019, and I thought, no way it's gonna win because it's subtitles, it's a foreign film. Nobody's gonna care. And then I was proven wrong. We need to see more of these foreign films in America because not only are they different and just kind of take you out of that, you know, Hollywood feel, it's, it tells a much more unique and compelling story, especially with the human side of things. Both Parasite and now Godzilla have done this extraordinarily well. Now, Parasite, I know it's not Japanese. Godzilla is a Japanese-made Toho film, which Toho is the original, I think, producers behind the first ever Godzilla. And going back to the past, the roots, with the stop motion, the animation, the way Godzilla looks, the way he interacts with everything, I thought that was fantastically well executed here. There are moments in this movie where you think to yourself, okay, where's Godzilla? I need some more Godzilla action. And then boom, he's right there. It's like every second you kind of wish that there was more Godzilla. He does appear and he will eventually show up. And when he arrives, that wake of destruction is just epic and glorious. And speaking more about the destruction, his heat ray in this movie, it's so good. It's not just a laser beam. It's 
an atomic bomb. His jaw, it's being destroyed and he has to regenerate that over time before he can do it again. And then also there is his uh, uh, spinal dorsals. <laughs> is that the correct word? They ignite in, in this white blue flame and then they extend out and then they re-inject into his body and then the, the heat ray just blasts out and it's so just mesmerizing. The sound design here is so pleasant on the ears. Godzilla is scary, but also beautiful to listen to. Speaking more on the filmmaking, camera work was shot very well. The acting, everyone did a great job here. Japan, I think they do their acting a little bit more uh, differently than definitely the American counterpart. It's more so like they're overacting, but they're also not. The acting here is actually really good. It's just a cultural barrier, whereas that also meets with the subtitles of the film as well. Just breaking that cultural barrier, if you can do that, you're gonna find a very fascinating, fun, exciting film with a good human story at the core of things. This movie, it's such a great time, and I highly, highly recommend everyone go and check this movie out. I only had about one flaw with the movie, and it does deal with a spoiler, so if you guys do not want to be spoiled, be sure to click off of this video. And that is in regards to the character of Noriko and her apparent on-screen death. Because at first, you see her get blown away by the shock waves of Godzilla's heat ray. We don't see a body, but then, but then you see blood raining down on Koichi and it's like, okay, she got evaporated. And it's sad because the relationship between Noriko, Koichi, and Akiko, their uh, fake daughter, it's something that's really driving the story. So whenever you confirm that this character is dead, it just kind of feels like the film stops. And again, I would always go back to the fact that they didn't show a body, so it, it didn't happen. But then it's that blood that rains down is what tricked my brain into thinking that, okay, Noriko is confirmed dead. And so when it comes to the end of the movie, we see Noriko A-OK. -okay, and then you realize that she has this glowing little vein in her neck. At first I thought, okay, maybe it's some kind of radiation sickness, just to tell a little bit more of the backstory on how that affected Japan after the droppings of the bombs. So yeah, I thought that would be a really cool touch point. But in terms of her character development, her arc, I just felt like her character got battered after scene, after scene, after scene. Because Koichi, his story ended right before that scene. Because he decided, yeah, I want to go ahead and live. So I thought it would be a little bit more compelling if Koichi actually saved Noriko. And then we followed Noriko's story up until the end, where then maybe we bring back Koichi, and that's when he flies the plane. That way, he's gotten his will to live, then we explore more of these other characters interacting, and then the lead character does come back. I'm just adding a little bit of a nitpick here, because at the core of things, this is a disaster movie. This is a primarily focused Godzilla feature film, and the film, it executes that so well. I still cannot get over the fact that this movie was made for $15 million, whereas the American movies were made for hundreds of millions of dollars. A little bit of an off-topic conversation here, but if you really do enjoy movies like this, and if you go and watch this and you enjoy it, I would definitely say go and check out some anime, because there are a lot of great animes out there that tell a similar story to this and Godzilla with Koichi and his little family and just their interactions and what they do for each other. There's so much humanity within these anime stories out of Japan that you just don't see again in these Hollywood narratives. I think in the next 20 years, we're going to look back on this movie and think, yeah, that's a rewatchable movie. This could be like the new Jurassic Park. Thank you guys so much for watching my movie review on Godzilla Minus One. What did you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like as it does help out a lot. And also, if you guys want to watch some more videos from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as turn on that notification bell. It'll let you guys know when I post my next movie review or upcoming filmmaking video. Otherwise, my name's Austin and I'll see you guys in the next one. Gojira, minus one.